Hello, everyone, and welcome to Medhead Osner Podcast, Season 3, Episode 11, live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and on Telegram. All of the places. Yep, we got them all going. Uh, it's Thursday, December 29th, 2022. I'm your host, Vikas Lanyan, and as always, I'm joined by my multi-talented co-host, Mr. Mike Balian, where we discuss our great Armenian history, different topics, eras, and people. Uh, thank you to everyone who's joining us on YouTube. Uh, please hit that like button if you haven't subscribed subscribe if you are on facebook like Every, share. everything that makes noise yeah your friends <laughs> let everybody know we are live we want lots of people here yeah. joining us this is going to be a great conversation um i'm not going to do any announcements because again our guest uh, today is the creator of the famous blog people of r yes Yerisha Kazarian. Uh, who is joining us live from Holland. It's 4 a.m. over there. 4 a.m., man. 4 a.m. At 4 a.m. He is a mm. trooper for doing this. The man um, is dedicated. Yes. Today's topic and discussion is about the new genetic study, which has been discovered, and it shows the Indo-European homeland uh, in Armenian highlands. And it's we're also going to shed some light on the connection of the genetics with Urartu. So, uh, without any further ado, I am going to bring Yerishe Gazarian on the screen. Welcome, Yerishe. Welcome back. Hello, guys. Hello. How are I'm you, back. buddy? <laughs> good time, you good guys. Back. Round two. <laughs> it is. Uh, yeah, first, first time, first time from Greece. This time back home. Yeah. Yep. In Holland. Well, uh, first of all, first of all, I want to thank you for uh, doing this again yeah, and joining us. Really, really early in the morning uh look yeah. at that coffee i hope there's some uh, whiskey in that coffee <laughs> no no <laughs> not, not yet not yet yeah yeah <laughs> so uh, um the first time you were around we kind of talked about uh urartu and the genetics and um mm -hmm. uh, it was a great conversation we had some technical difficulties yeah. but we made it work yeah. now mm -hmm. you're back in holland with one gigabytes of download <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully yeah. we don't have any issues but uh, um yeah i think we won't so what have you been up to lately since our last uh um last conversation oh oh yeah the, the thing is going on um there have been some, some new uh in have come out but basically the last time we spoke i was at the time and right before i went to greece i went to it talk uh, by David Reich uh, because the guy uh, has, has just, just released the, on, on uh, the Indo-European homeland and with that study they have actually for the first time genetics data from uh, Van uh, um, Turkey because you know data being released from the Republic of Armenia has been very transparent but also been very transparent and open about the genetics they find on that territory. There's been virtually nothing and uh, very few samples released, <clears throat> which is we have to understand the greater homeland of Armenians have. Eastern Anatolia, as they call it, of course, we call it the, the Armenian Highlands, which is the geographical term. Um, but yeah, much of our homeland is our ancient homeland so um not much has been released from those re regions Iran and um eastern turkey uh, uh, but for the first time they have access. so basically from that moment on everyone when uh, the, the data has been released uh, for the purpose of the study people have been calculations and uh, comparisons since the data is actually uh, free to you everyone can do their own calculations and since then basically a lot of that has been going on uh, uh, trying to pinpoint the uh, original armenian home homeland they were related to all those uh, things have been going, going on i had uh, it's uh with, with people about uh, the core genetics of different uh, theories but, but yeah basically that uh, has been going on uh, uh, there's been also other studies 
is uh, related to Lengu. Basically, that's actually, um, uh, I would say, David Reiches, Lazaridis, uh, uh, was the main guy, I think, the main name of the paper that they, the researchers mm-hmm. do. But they uh, have dropped the bombshell, uh, have, uh, <laughs> dropped the bomb, basically. And people are now tr- trying to scramble and uh, what this means for all the other theories that have been uh, uh, devised before. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, when it comes to, of course, uh, the research, there's been other. Uh, that's a different story. But, but uh, yeah. Uh, now, that, you also what... recently, you recently, you, uh, and we'll show some videos. You, you guys had uh, uh, mm-hmm. kind of like a museum, right? Like a, mm-hmm. a lot of artifacts from yeah. uh, Urarti and artifacts, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we, Being, uh, we, we, I was going to say, we we have a video which we'll share later once we get into the Urartu part. So, yeah, I've seen, I've seen um, you posting a lot yeah, of those videos lately. You, you've posted a, quite a few mm. great articles on uh, peopleofr.com. So those of you who don't uh, follow People of R, I really recommend you guys go and, and um, uh, you know, check it out. It's follow. People of R, A-R, basically, uh, .com and uh, amazing articles. Yerisha puts so much time and effort doing the research and writing great articles. So uh, thank you for that, by the way. You are doing an amazing job, and I know you've been doing this for a very long time. And um, you, you have a great following, but we want more people, the yeah. new generation, to go learn more about uh, what you do in our history. So thank you for that. Uh, yeah, we kind of... Uh obsession it has become <laughs> kind of an obsession for a while you know uh, armenian history is so interesting it's i would say more in than, uh, than many other um, uh, even european histories although everything but the armenian one is um, is interesting because it's kind of puzzling it has lots yeah, of layers there's a lot of we, mystery we know very little yeah we a lot of mystery, contradicting things, you know, and um, um, I always call it the tip of the iceberg. That's what we know, know and the rest is literally under yeah. with such an old people that literally we have uh, the word, word Armenia. I mean, how many nations can say this? That that the, the name of their uh, the country has been written in uniform. And not just uniform, but recently I actually found out the, the Egyptian, um, and I posted also. Uh, I made a post. It's it's so fascinating that it was a it wasn't a it wasn't Asian world. And, you know, sometimes people say that uh, nations should. Uh, well, uh, I think we're past our, our expiration, and they were still going. Yeah. Right now, but uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, we uh, are. We like you know. It, it's proven we're the oldest, oldest living civilization. You know, predating the Egyptians. So uh, I think that's one of the main reasons. And we've had conversations with so many intellectuals who agree that uh, I think that's one of the reasons why there's so much hatred towards us because of the fact how old our history is and. Um, it's threatening to other cultures and, you know, we don't want to name names, but you know, who we're talking about. Um, so let's, uh, start with basically the, the new finds, the, the, the new genetics that has been, uh, discovered as far as, um, you know, uh, pairing or proving that the Indo-European civilization gave birth or began, let's say, if that's the correct word, at the Armenian Highlands. Uh, But before we get into it, I wanna thank everybody who's joining us live. We have uh, everybody joining us on our YouTube channel, on People of R, on the People of R Facebook, our Facebook. Uh, So everybody, thank you so much for joining us. This is awesome. So, um, but yeah, let me, do you want me to bring the slide up? Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Okay, perfect. Jump into the nitty gritty. So let's start from here. Uh, Actually, let me make this full screen so we're not in the way, so our guests can see this. All right. Mm-hmm. So, okay, let's talk about this. Yeah, let's talk about, about this. Um, basically, this is my uh, friends have made. 
um, and this is this is an interesting one. Clearly, this one shows uh, uh, the ancestry proportions of uh, uh, in the um, and what we see here is is uh, uh, the most thing about this is that we, we see that the early um, samples I have a few more slides that will show this. Um, and and uh, we'll show that the very earliest samples that we find in, in uh, Armenia, like, but also in, which is interestingly enough, lowlands Azerbaijan, those samples, Neolithic is like, you know, it's like um, from 12 years ago until, you know, something early Bronze Age uh, years ago. Um, uh, all those samples that we find very, they have very, very much Armenian like. Yeah. Uh, however, however, the interesting thing, thing Armenia, uh, the Republic of Armenia has been subject. So, which, which is interesting is that we find um, Armenian around Lake Van, very strong genetics uh, that we. Really more or less the Armenian like genetics, but the Republic of Armenia has changed, especially uh, a little bit pre time. So we see the EHG component, which means mm -hmm. which it stands for Eastern Hunter Gather component, and that's the component yeah. that breeds in his in their paper. Uh, they have identified for the spread of Indo-European languages. So what they say here, uh, we see that there was some kind of an invasion of um, ancestry, uh, step ancestry into the region that's now that, that ancestry is absent. However, in Turkey or which was ancient Armenia around Van and the rest of Anatolia. Yeah. But this chart is that, that we see uh, the EHG actually decline. So, so <clears throat> uh, one of the theories that, 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 and I can get the theory, it might get a little bit technical. I hope people can follow this. But one of the main theories, say, especially many Armenian scholars today is that well are native to that region however the Armenian language has suited from steppe and, and it has come to Armenia through the Caucasus and after the Iron Age there's the, the Urartian language they say is not related to in the European language so Urartu, a group of people in the European people came and basically uh, the Urartians however the genetic shows the, the opposite which is which is interesting the Bronze Age people with the step component they have declined after the Urartian uh, um, has uh, emerged so and we know this because the Urartians called them it um, and they actually describe how they have fought with Etiuni, conquered the and basically uh, returned uh, the genetics of the region as we can see from Neolithic samples the much older samples very Armenian like step component and the Armenians and the Urartians have actually broke with the step component and actually made it more, again, more Armenian. -like. So it, it's a fascinating thing because some people would say, no, the Urartians got the destroyed. Armenians, turns out, no, it, it's actually the reverse. The Urartianized the Republic of Armenia and that regions too. Uh, there, you know, so it's another strong uh, indication of that, that Urartians were literally 
uh, and they have harmonized that region um, and that's what happening in the genetics and basically you know um, I'm kind of this discussion that many people like this associate Urartu from Armenia when there is literally I find this the strongest evidence of all but people keep ignoring this is that there's legislation in Iran, uh, like ancient Beishtun, which is a contemporary, contemporary kingdom to Urartu, where they literally translate Urartu as Armenia. Yeah, yeah. So evidence you need is like... Well, I mean, not just that. You know? I mean, you're talking about if you really look at Urartu, you know, the, having Argishti go and build... You know, um, we had uh, Mikhail Badalian on last week, who's the archaeologist mm-hmm. who's been doing the digs at uh, Erebuni Fortress. And I mean, it, it that's the thing. It's yeah. like, how do you how do you argue that where it's right there? It's, it's, right, it's yeah. scripted in uh, in stone saying that uh, the king, you know, from Urartu came and, and, you know, built this, built that. But it, it's just unbelievable. Like we have to actually get to the uh, genetics to prove ourselves now. Well, I mean, think about it. The location, the location is one clue, right? But then again, so much of the map has changed over time, right? I, I mean, look, perfect example: Eastern Anatolia. They were our lands, yeah, right. In ancient times, the Turks are going to claim something else, yeah, and other people who in- inhabited the area are going to claim something else, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So this is what would be your likely your best identifier, yeah, that th- we're pretty much linked to no i understand you know uh by the way everybody i know uh that yerisha's audio is clipping a little bit uh i think it's just um the internet uh it don't worry about it it's we'll just power through it um it is what it is but um sometimes it like it clips and drops but um it's okay let's let's continue um um do you want me to go to the next slide uh yeah yeah let's go yeah this okay. might uh, look a little bit awkward. Um, yeah, so this one is also, very, I would say, uh, um, so basically this also in correspondence with the, um, what we see here are actually ancient samples mm-hmm. on a uh, principal component analysis uh, plot. Uh, with, with, uh, so where we can see here, that this is, um most of these samples what you see those are the ancient samples the green, green dots are from from the republic of armenia they've been released uh-huh. from the republic mm-hmm. of armenia um they've done sampling and uh, uh, so we can see there's a huge huge of dots uh, clustering right in between north caucasians and georgians are um, related to the uh, late, late the Iron Age um, uh, period. So th- this is interesting, um, and we'll see later that the Neolithic samples, Armenian-like, they cluster uh, within Urartu in Armenia, and we see in early Iron Age there was a shift of a population akin to well, Georgians and North Caucasians and a little bit shifted towards uh, towards um, in this map we see Azerbaijanis where the modern Azeris uh, close, close to Iranians uh, Azerbaijanis close to, close to Kurds and Iranians um, but mm-hmm. yeah so the, this, this map shows a lot of uh, dots um, there uh, Iron Age, uh, you know, uh, uh, early Iron Age, and these basically these, these people have been displaced uh, and um, Urartian. So after that, during the Iron Age, to so kind of again prove the theory that Armenians are more, more Urartian-like than it uni as. Should I go to the next slide? Let's go. Let's just go to uh, to slides. Yeah, here here is another one that also um, uh, um, shows this uh, basically uh, 
the uh, connection. Uh, see and here. This is this this is based off of okay. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so this is all this data is uh, collected from the uh, mainly from those and Lazaridis that uh, during their paper. Um, and they've all people who can actually do their own, um, you know, calculations and compare, um, compare. And here, what we see is again, we see the, the corner one, those triangles at the left. Uh, for me, it is a, uh, this is it at the uh, corner. Mm -hmm. And those are very are there. Basically, we see their uh, Azerbaijan Neolithic and Chalcolith uh, intertwined with the Urartian samples, with Armenian Yervos, medieval Armenian samples, uh, samples from Armenia Artaxiat, uh, at um, Chalcolithic, um, uh, Armenian samples, and in Armenia. When I'm saying Armenia, by the way, I mostly mean the Republic Republic of Armenia. These samples have not been released from Turkey and Azerbaijan, but yeah. uh, recently we do. Yeah, yeah, recently we do have some sampling, especially two of them. Uh, we can see here, um, or, or at least two clusters, Azerbaijan and one from Urartu. So all that left corner thing, that's very what we see with Armenia today uh, that that's where the modern Armenians class however then we can see if we go up from left to right we can see a cluster of Kura Raxis um, and there uh, uh, those are a little, little bit more shifted to one and then if we go even further up we can see the Armenian and uh, eyeballs, the samples from Republic of Armenia, uh, those are, are the ones that will show samples. And we can see they cluster, the, 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 we have there a few of early Bronze Age and late, late uh, um, uh, early Iron Age, age uh, and Iron Age samples. They all cluster very close to what with the um, region between Georgians, modern Georgians some other occasions okay so again yeah, Risha, um yeah. sorry to cut you off before we continue mm -hmm. is it possible do you have a headset you might be because it seems like the mic noise cancellation keeps uh oh, it's really? dropping yeah it's dro dropping yeah, your it's, voice it's uh, clipping okay. it's clipping your voice every few seconds yeah and uh, i think oh, people okay. are having a hard I'll, time understanding so yeah, uh, we can take uh, a quick pause if you want to try yeah, uh, let, maybe if you have it. a headset let's see if that helps uh, i think it, it typically it's the the mics on i know you're on an ipad it might be the, the mm -hmm. noise cancellation um system so let, let, yeah let's okay try yeah let's try let's try the, okay uh, we'll have to unless, unless there's an option in the ipad to turn that off <clears throat> Not sure if there's an option, but uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Let's see. Can you hear me? Yeah. What? Oh yeah. Is this better? Is it? Is it? Um. Well, we let's try let's it. Try I mean, it. can hear you. Uh, uh, okay. No, I think I think it's still. Flipping? No? Yeah. No? I don't know. Let's there. keep going. Let's see what happens. Let's see how it happens. Mm -hmm. Can you hear us? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Uh, anyway. Let's try it with this. Let's see how it works. If it doesn't, we'll go back to the, yeah. to the thing. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. Maybe it's, there's still connection. <laughs> um, yeah, but so I, I was telling like the, the Armenian like that we see the, the Irish a little bit bit shifted towards the Caucasus. So nice. It's similar to, to very close to still have They're a little bit more, more shifted. So core Armenian genetics is more, more region. Yeah. So okay. did, um, did, you, did you guys 
still get it so. yeah, yeah yeah no we get yeah. it it's just like uh, i think the audio is still doing the same yeah, thing i don't oh, know if it's their oh, internet okay. connection uh, or it's it's um um i don't know if you want to maybe uh we could take a quick pause no, and you can, can re the... reconnect or yeah um do you want to try uh reconnecting we can take a quick yeah, break sure sure yeah yeah okay. yeah yeah, if you don't mind, like, yeah, maybe I, I don't, I can't tell if it's from your, uh, from the uh, iPad or it's an internet thing. Maybe you can reconnect with, uh, like, maybe yeah, we'll, set, restart the iPad or something. <laughs> but we'll take a quick break and, and uh, we'll wait check. for you. Yeah. Okay. 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 Good. All right, guys. Thank yeah, you for thanks, being patient. Thanks for being us. patient. Um, we're trying we're, our best with overseas connections. Yeah. We really are. So, anybody have any questions? <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah. we were we were we were talking about uh, prior to starting season three about we should try and jump into genetics. Yeah, like where and what and how how the tree connects and to where. Yeah, you know. Um, I know I myself like a lineage type of yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know I myself talked to a few people um, when I was in Paris that may or may not have had connections um, to certain genealogists who have actually focused, you and I have talked about this, yeah, on, yeah. focused on specifically Armenian genealogy uh, dating back to the you know, kingdom of Van yeah. and or yeah. Urartu. Um, and it is a fascinating topic because we all, I mean, I want to know where the hell I'm from. Yeah, no, that'd be interesting. Mm. We have a lot of work to do I, in 2023. I mean, I mean, look, I haven't done a DNA <laughs> test, but... yeah. Well, I have, I have, and, and, I have not. Yeah, mine, mine is like ninety-eight uh, percent Antap region, and then there's like the wait, rest is like wait, 2%, you, wait, you didn't wait, one percent France, two percent. Wait, Italy wait, you didn't, you didn't get the three percent Jew? That's like almost for no, everybody. No, no, oh, I didn't okay. get it. No, okay. no Jew in me. Um, Every single person I talk to. Yeah, but um, everyone, thank you for joining us. Yerusha will be back with us. He's trying to uh, maybe restart his iPad and see if that audio thing fixes it. I know it's annoying, but he is in Holland, so um, I don't know how well the internet connection is. But um, it, how's everybody doing? Any plans for New Year's? <laughs> <laughs> Share with us. Chat. There, oh, there he is. He's back. Okay. Uh, let's bring him back on. Um, Elisha? Okay, guys. I'm back. All right. It's it's, it's much it's better. Right. Right. Oh, okay. It's Still, it's still it's better. A better. I think it's the it's iPad a mic. Better, yeah. I think it's the yeah, iPad it mic. I think it has a noise okay. cancellation, and it, yeah, it, it might okay. be um, a setting in there that the noise cancellation. It 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 every time you you're talking, when it picks up any background noise, it tries to kill it. So I think that's what it is. But um, mm -hmm. it's okay. We'll 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 manage. So talk slowly, so maybe it will be less of a problem. It's a little bit better right now. Yeah, it's let's, a little bit better. All right, let's let's go no, with let's it. Let's go with it. Maybe okay. yeah. it's a go sign that I shouldn't talk this fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you weren't talking fast. I think it's just the the yeah. the okay. technology isn't all that great. Yeah, we've noticed yeah, that with people who connect with iPads and iPhones, uh, it does that. So, uh, mm -hmm. and it's not just because you're in Holland; it it happens all the time. But it seems like people are saying it's better. So. Okay, let's continue. So this is, uh, we're looking at this map right now. Yeah, yeah. So this, this map shows a few modern populations uh, compared to uh, it genetically. Um, and we can see that the Armenians literally interject with the, the URAR that have been released from, from Van. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we can see the COVID shifted uh, towards the north. Uh, which is actually ge geographically also. Uh, then we see Georgians a little bit closer to Armenians. Uh, we see uh, like Levantine people uh, on the other side of the Armenian cluster, well within the Urartian samples. Uh, up north, we see uh, the Eastern Kurds cluster very, to uh, very much together. Um, so this mass similarities between uh, the Urartians and, uh, and the Armenians. Okay, let me go to the next slide. 
Let's go. Yeah. What is happening here? Huh. Mouse uh, produce, mouse issues. Produce a show and <laughs> yeah. do this at the same time. We need an assistant. Anyone want to volunteer? <laughs> yeah. We're in Burbank. Um, okay. So let's talk about this. Yeah. So in a little bit. Uh, and here we see the, basically that entire blue thing would be uh, considered very Armenian-like, uh, genetically speaking. So, like a small side note, when we're talking about an ethnicity like Armenians, Syrians, or whoever, Georgians, um, ethnicities are uh, are not always related to genetics, right? So, it's a different thing. You have groups, mm -hmm. and then you have language, you know, linguistics, and then you have genetics a little bit different than ethnic borders and linguistic borders people can can have, have they still be considered part, part of us, the same ethnicity uh, but really genetically we can see that Armenians would be very uh, um, very similar to within in that blue circle what we, we see here especially two red uh, uh, two red circles those are very ancient samples that are found. So, uh, the uh, as well as Chalcolithic Armenia, as well as uh, uh, Azerbaijan, Lola Azerbaijan, uh, they all are uh, very Armenian like. Uh, and during the late Bronze Age, early Iron Age, we see a group of people region of South Caucasus where today is the modern Republic of Armenia which is closer to Georgians and Caucasians and after the Urartian age we have seen the genetics shift back towards the ancient uh, and actually this is so fascinating because it's very much in line with what uh, we can we can read from Horanazi. Uh, uh, really? Is, yeah, because you know Horanazi uh, has written that anciently, you know, Noah's Ark landed on the lands yeah. of Ballarat, yes. and there uh, came, came the Armenians, basically originated from there. And Noah's Ark has been actually kind of identified uh, that it it was during the Great Flood, right? thousand mm -hmm. years ago has been hypothesized by a certain uh, in, uh, scholars and re researchers um, and they have identified around when the ice age uh, melted and the, the water started to rise um, so it is neolithic so a little bit post neolithic mm -hmm. uh, we have seen and uh, uh, the says basically that the Origins of uh, the ancient origins of Armenia. So we do see the Neolithic samples very Armenian. Like after that, with his people um, went to Babylon, he says. Not sure how much it was Babylon or Sumer, you know, of the Sumerians. And they went a little bit south because it is consistent that a group of northern people uh, um, there or, or a little bit maybe earlier or mm -hmm. middle of the Republic of Armenia so we, we see a little bit of a shift of genetics and, and then the turn of Armenian genetics which, which could be identified with a uh, uh, return of uh, home um, so that that those those ancient they're yeah. very interesting yeah so there's <clears throat> so, so so what you're saying is so what you're saying sorry to cut you off Yerusha, so what you're saying is there's a certain a possibility of an alignment to certain biblical yeah. scripture slash epic of gilgamesh slash yeah. genealogy here yeah yeah and slash uh, armenian um yeah, uh, yeah. medieval historians uh, uh, and mm -hmm. remembrance of ancient uh, Armenian. Yeah, you know, how, how did how did they have that information back then? That's what I want to know. 
You know what I mean? Like, Horde Nazi? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's so fascinating. He, he pinpointed many things that identified. For example, um, he talks about, about Hike and, and his return, you know, uh, Middle Bronze Age, somewhere around that age. And actually, there has been a genetic study. It's uh, from Haber and uh, uh, it was a few years ago, I think like five years ago. And they since as an ethnicity have originated from, from the, on the Armenian highlands around that age. So that aging is also consistent. Also identified, uh, he, he has mentioned many kings and this of Urartu. Um, you know, he mentions uh, Manavas, uh, um, and we know that in classical Armenian, the U was V, like we have Samuel has been, uh, is we call him Samavas, would be Menuas, um, that's mm -hmm. one of the, uh, um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, of high -tech. um. So he has many things he talked about, about uh, Van, the kingdom of Van, and all those discoveries he made much, much later. So yeah. I'm kind of fascinated with the uh, memory of Armenian history that's been recorded during the Middle Ages. Okay. Well, I mean, we know from from all the episodes we've done with Khorinati. Well, like yes. you said, Khorinati has has done the whole uh, genealogy. I guess yeah, you and that's it. and that's that's what I was well, saying. Like, not, I'm, yeah, I'm, lineage. I should say lineage has tracked back all the way to which, hike, right? Which is so. which is interesting. Is is uh, I'd love to know. I mean, not that maybe we have any information on it, right? Mm -hmm. But God, back in the fifth, sixth centuries, you had information some way somehow to connect these dots yeah right which is not available now. i mean not, or maybe not it is that we don't the, know but, yeah. not the way it is now at least that's the way well, like you said at least that's the way we would assume i mean it could be in yeah, right? hidden in certain yeah, museums yeah. and archived somewhere um yeah very cool um yeah and he one of the other um the names i, I feel like there has been not enough uh uh, done uh, on Horanazi's texts and the the names that he compared to the modern knowledge that we know today. Because I haven't really a lot of information about about that. Um, but one of the uh, things uh, that uh, I believe one of the brothers of um, of or, or one of the descendants of Haik was Hor. Uh, that um, kind of the families and um, and 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 Hor is actually blind with uh, the Horians in in Hebrew the Horians are called the Hori and um, we also know from Assyrian uh, cuneiform that, that the you they have the same uh, cuneiform sign so uh, if you really like read into what Horanzi was saying, it's actually kind of stunning. Horanzi is one of the uh, major Armenian houses in line with what we see in that uh, with genetics too. You know, around the uh, old the um, old regions um, uh, that could be uh, to the Horan uh, to the ancient Horan uh, houses. Yeah. So uh, over here, this map, this kind of shows the, the the migration. Yeah, yeah. This this is this is a map from uh, from that uh, study with uh, um, and um, um, here they, they identify. Can you the, uh, be, be, the can you shed Yerisha? Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, can mm -hmm. you when you say that study? Can you shed some light? Who did this study? Where uh, where it? Uh, who was involved? Uh, why they did this study? So basically, uh, um, <clears throat> the study has been done by uh, 
uh, geneticists uh, who are studying and there I th think at this point they're mostly in it that would be my assumption because the publish would be mostly uh, interested in the uh, pro to in the Europe want to basically find out um, if, if they can correspondence with um, ancient genetic uh, trans linguistics um, and um, some of the leading geneticists that drive and there are a few others that are doing these uh, these analyses um, they are uh, they have published a few works and basically analyze ancient uh, DNA of uh, because it has been that the Indo-Europeans uh, originated that language, you know, um, and it it usually it was believed um, that it came came from the step uh, where we, uh, the cluster that's called Yamnaya. Um, uh, it's uh, <clears throat> so when they started to analyze the Yamnaya samples, uh, when when the study of genetics uh, became available to us, uh, they found that a significant amount of uh, um, uh, of from the Armenian highlands and the Caucasus. So they were fascinated. Um, there was they, they basically assumed that those genetics, but they were the spreaders of all the in the European language, which does they spread also uh, the genetics to all, all the in the European um, regions who have, have a significant amount of um, uh, of uh, Armenian highlands genetics, and uh, they were kind of fast the research and, and um, they found out basically uh, uh, that many uh, um, that there is something off of uh, north uh, uh, like uh, about the steppe theory uh, is, is the one that says that all the Indo European languages originated north <clears throat> the main thing that they found that was off is, is that well within the European languages is an Anatolian uh, branch of the language uh, language that the Hittites spoke Hittites, Luvians and, and any traces of these Yamnaya genetics so they kept and they basically figured out that uh, uh, the only thing that binds uh, the uh, in the, the uh, genetically speaking uh, of the Indo-European family uh, uh, that's probably related to uh, uh, something in the Caucasus that region because the Anatolians have a um, region but also the uh, steppe people step you know the Yamnakan amounts of those genetics so, uh, also linguistically speaking, there has there is some kind of a shift uh, between the Yamnaya branch. So they hypothesize now, now that the most, most likely outcome hypothesis is that there were some kind of a, and they call them proto Indo. So those are pre proto Indo Europeans. Yeah. They call them proto. Have lived somewhere around the Armenian highlands. Yeah. Yes. Now, well, how far does that date back? Ooh, that dates back around the. Uh, uh, so it must be around uh, um, six thousand BC. So we're speaking about eight thousand years ago. Okay. And those. Uh, uh, around that age. However, uh, um, uh, David Reich and their team also believe that uh, some of the Yamnaya people, they returned back to Armenia 
and actually uh, so brought back some Yamna genetics towards Armenia. I hear you a little bit, but uh, yeah, that's at this point, that's what they believe. And my disagreement, um, uh, I would say I kind of disagree because it's it's literally, it's, it's very enigmatic, but the only reason they say is because, because right now linguistically it's believed that the Armenian um, uh, is is um, is a late, later uh, arrival back migration language to that region, and that initially we did have, but a different one from a different branch. That's basically what they believe. But I don't, and I actually think that the missing link language and culture that they were talking, they do say like okay. There is probably the, the ancient Indo-Europeans, they started, they call them the Proto-Indo-Anatolians from the Armenian highlands. Uh, there is a missing cultural and linguistic link there. They haven't found it. say they need to do more investigation. But I actually believe that that uh, missing uh, Hurrian language. I think that they just have misidentified the Hurrian language in non-Indo-European language, but it actually is an Indo-European language or it is rooted in the old Proto-Indo-Anatolian language. That's that's one of the theories that I have actually. Uh, Thai, uh, the Hurrian Urartians with, with Armenians and uh, one of the reasons why I say this is because there are actually other researchers like um, the which has been actually very poorly uh, studied, uh, uh, but what in this uh, category have been done by um, uh, by Fournette, and they have published uh, uh, several works on it, including a huge bay identifies similarities between Indo-European and Orion. And fascinating book. Uh, there's a lot of similarities. Um, um, which like deep rooted similarities, not just um, uh, not just uh, wordings, but also gra grammar similarities. And we see this same with Armenian and Urartian. Into it, we can see actually that uh, Urartian might be, and this is something also what Ivazian um, also identified. These are these are just a few researchers who have done like very intensive languages. Other than that, actually, no one really studied those languages very. Uh, I believe that that if they really dive into it and really see and look into the horizon, they might actually find their missing link. Uh, exactly there. I see. Mm -hmm. This is this is your your theory basically. Yeah. This is this would be my theory. Um, let's see. Let's the next. <clears throat> Another very interesting map. Um, this map actually shows um, two Neolithic samples from the Caucasus, like, like I said. So, who basically of all the human beings, all, all the populations in the world, who's the closest Neolithic sample? from, from uh, Caucasus uh, uh, from uh, Armenia Armenia like I said the very ancient ones the, uh, said the Koranazi also assassinated uh, Mount Ararat they started to live in that region um, uh, there was some kind of a uh, 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 like uh, like departure and we see here too that uh, uh, basically more than they are north uh, uh, we see Trabzon region which is also related to Armenia mm -hmm. and so of course genetically yeah. they score the closest to very ancient sample uh, from Armenia like uh, you know 12 to 6 thousand year old uh, samples um, from the Neolithic yeah Technical difficulties, guys, again. Oh.
it's going no, good. No, no we're not just, at all. No, we're trying to figure this. Out. <laughs> um, yeah, I okay. might be going. Sorry about that. Fast, so no, 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 not, no, at, no, all. not, not at, at all. Not at all. Okay, good. We're looking at the chat as well. There's an interesting conversation going yeah. on. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Bible versus there's, uh, there's, a de- there's a debate. Yeah. So uh, oh, I don't know wow. if you see the chat. Yeah. yeah there's or, always or, debates. Yeah. yeah. But I, I wanna um, I wanna thank everyone again joining us live. We again we apologize. I know there's a little bit of audio thing, but uh, we're powering through it. Uh, and then uh, if you have any questions uh, for Yerisha, ask uh, in the chat, and we'll definitely. Um, um you know ask the question for you um okay so uh should we go to the next slide yeah let's go to the okay yeah so here is the missing link uh, thing mentioned so you see we see this is in uh this is a screenshot from uh last parts from the conclusion of uh lazaridis and david Reich's paper read uh, that they say basically that um, uh, research into uh, the Caucasus, West Asia uh, region, uh, uh, Southern Arc, because it's Arc a little bit, basically anything between the three seas, right? The Black Sea, Iranian, because they uh, believe that there will be we found a missing culture that will tie all the in the Europeans uh, together, and they were called ethically called them Proto Indo Anatolians, which is the okay. homeland of uh, ever that if, mm-hmm. if you really do research into it, they should actually take a very deep dive into language, which I believe that that's that might be a very good uh, missing link with the uh, with. Um, the origins of in the European language, which is so now are people are there are certain <clears throat> certain uh, mm-hmm. besides basic researchers like yourself, are there actual uh, accredited, you know, ling- linguists working on this trying to link this? Yeah, yeah. So like I said, uh, Bomhart and Fournette, they have written some interesting work, but they've done a comparative analysis. They've written a book with. 400, 300 something pages. Um, uh, book is called, called uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, the, the Indo European. So they've done a deep analysis and they actually concluded that Orion is related uh, on a very, very deep level. Um, so there are not many, but and those who do, they actually do find that. But, Ryan is related to the European. From, uh, let's say, the archaeological point of view, uh, uh, we actually, uh, the evidence of Orion always in conjunction with, with in the European people. Most Orion texts have been found among Hittites. And we know that Hittites were in the European. The other Orion texts are found among Mitanni kingdom. And there is a great Great group Mitanni in, in the European people because yeah. many names of their kings and in European. And then we have, of course, a offshoot of Ryan, which they call uh, very much linked to the Armenian people, which we also know are, are in the European uh, people. So there's always a connection between Ryan and in the European. There's never been a, a loot a kingdom of Ryan's without in the Europeans, so yeah, there's a deep uh, level connection there, and I believe that that's the proto in the European. Like the European came from the Orion. It's uh, all the other languages were just offshoots, and good, good analysis into it that they would find uh, lots of uh, similarities. But uh, uh, other linguists might dis- disagree, you know, and. Um, but I, I, well, that's what actually that was going to be my next question from from everything you've read mm-hmm. uh like you said the, these people who have done all this research and and putting these uh together trying to show uh the links or it should mm-hmm. you should say the missing link uh, what is the the argument from the other side 
um, as far as other linguists that are saying, no, this isn't correct That's or, a good question. you know. Yeah, it's interesting. The, the, the problem with linguistics is that it's uh, very difficult to, let's say, uh, analyze and separate uh, different language families. Uh, for example, um, it's considered a, um, a, 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 but it's also, it has so much Germanic in it. It has French charts that shows how much, uh, um, the, or at least I think the old English was more Germanic. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's a Dutch, actually Frisian dialect. It's very funnily, yeah, there's so much uh, Latin into it. In, uh, and, and um, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, um, so basically, it's, it's you have hybrid languages, and so difficult to, to find out the core of a language. Armenian language and any ancient language of modern people are living today has gone through an evolution of languages. Of course. So, just like gene is morph and evolve the longer a language exists it also evolutionary properties actually something darwin also talked about uh, the, the 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 argument for the other side is that basically there's a theory to classify languages and they have classified the European language family that's how they call is a non indian European language based on elements. Uh, the problem again, you are analyzing a dead language that no one's written on a few tablets. You don't really know the grammar of. You don't know how to pronounce anything. Um, earlier, they also identified Armenian as part of the Persian language, and then they said, "Oh no, Armenian is actually not Persian, but it has many Persian long words." Confused. So again, this is very difficult to peel apart. And I'm not a linguist, but yeah, linguist, um, the mainstream at this point does agree that considering certain linguistic uh, uh, classifications that the does not fit within the in the European cluster. But, but again, but I, I mean, if you if you go, if you fall if that that claim that it's Persian, you know, if you go back, you're talking about two cultures living next to one another and uh obviously the persians used to be sasanians you know mm -hmm. so uh, i mean their language has evolved and at the same time you had matani urartu all these you know uh, evolutions that have happened so how can they claim that it's persian when these two cultures have existed almost next to one another for such a long time and and they spoke different languages Obviously, there was mixtures, yeah, right? Everybody so, yeah, borrows there words. Yeah, there was there's influence, influence yeah, no there, matter what. There's yeah, a lot of, of course. influence. Yeah, and and, and uh, yeah. But, but my point is that that the earlier linguists would, would say that the Armenian language which falls within the uh, Brian, uh within the Persian family. Uh, yeah. Uh, however, the later they said, "Oh, no, a little bit deeper analysis," and they said, "No, the Armenian language is now a language which isolated. It's unrelated to European." language so that's also, yeah. also an oddity uh but w to which one is one it's sprung, sprung forth they don't really know and that's one of the things that also against the theory that the, the armenian language which directly came from the yamnaya as is really, or the other languages that came from the yamnaya language family um what was the source and it's more related to the old Ryan, because there's a lot of uh, from those, but yeah, yeah um, language, uh, you know, yeah. Before I ask you the, we had a question from from one of the audience. Before I ask you, we actually got some technical help for you. Emily says, if, if you're on the iPad, if you go to settings, accessibility, scroll down to audio visuals. There's some noise cancellation uh, setting that can help with it. So with the choppiness, okay. but. Yeah. You know, if if you're willing to do that. Yeah, but, I'm willing to do that. Do we still have the choppiness? 
Um, yeah, it's, not, it's, it's not as bad as before. Yeah, it's not, it's as, not bad as, as bad as before. before. But yeah, it's definitely the the mic. I I I know how these iPads and 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 uh, iPhones work, so yeah. I think that's what it is. But again, I don't know if you want to take a, a quick yeah. I'll um, do the break and I'll figure out some technical stuff. So it's in the settings and uh, I've yeah, she said it's in uh, set. Go. She said go to settings accessibility. Uh, and then scroll down to audio visual and okay. she said there's a noise cancellation background noise setting that can be adjusted okay so accessibility audio okay. yeah let me check okay then uh, i'll go there right now okay so uh, again, I want to thank everybody who is joining us live on YouTube, Facebook, uh, on the people of our YouTube and their Facebook. We got a uh, uh, quite a few people joining us. Thank you everybody for the live chat. We have an exciting yeah uh, pretty busy, debate guys. going back and forth. I like it. Um, and uh, just be civil, please. Be respectful they towards are. one another. They are. No, they are. I'm just want no, to double check and make sure. Um, and I hope you guys are enjoying this conversation. Uh, again, we're trying to figure out the the audio situation, the choppiness with Yerisha, uh, to make it a lot more clear. Um, but again, if you guys, uh, I, I did pin it in the chat. Uh, go follow peopleofart.com. People of yeah. uh, there's some great articles um, that you guys can read that Yerisha has put together. Um, a lot about Urartu. We're 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 fascinated with Urartu, um, and we're actually gonna have. Mikhail Badali, I'm back on sometime in March, and uh, we're going to dive deep into Urartu, uh, some other fact. I mean, he's yeah. an archaeologist. He does all the digs and everything. So, um, I mean, he's a, he's, a, he's a wealth of information. Yeah. Just that, just that yeah. one chat we had with him wasn't enough. Yeah. You know? um, if, uh, if you guys are on YouTube, please hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, subscribe. Subscribe to Yerisha, People of Ours channel. Hit that like button on Facebook. Share it with family, friends. Um, let's see, what else? Um, uh, if you guys want to get some sculptures, <laughs> let's do some plugs. Uh, you guys can go to uh, medherosnet.com. Everything is off for 20% uh, right now. And um, uh, that's till end of the year. So if you want those sculptures, the T-shirts, we got the floating hat over here. But uh, okay, Yerisha is back. Uh, Yerisha, can you yeah, hear? Yeah, guys. Us? Yeah, I can hear you guys. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's much yeah. better. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the question. Interesting. Yeah. Um, the question I was gonna ask you. Mm -hmm. uh, verse from. Um, uh, let's see here. I, I kind of lost the spot. Was from. Uh, Amor, I think. Uh, I think the, he his question was um, he asked, uh, "What what effect do you think it happened to the Armenian uh, genetics after the genocide?" That's a good question. <clears throat> what effect? I know we're um, jumping more into the future, but yeah, yeah, yeah. The th the the problem is, I, I think uh, effect uh, um, is going to happen. I think it hasn't happened yet, yet. Um, <clears throat> because when do we, we do Armenians tend to stick together? Um, there, uh, there've been um, like genetic analysis on um, Armenians in different regions, and we do still cluster very close together. We're a tight knit, mm -hmm. and that goes back at least um, towards, uh, towards the Chalcolithic. Neolithic, but that's a different story. But um, yeah, so it's very. When we go into the future, <clears throat> I think there is going to be that because of our scattering. I mean, genetics will be diluted. There will be more. Uh, um, so it might. So it might be. Uh, it's safe diverse. to say it's too soon to tell. Possibly, Tell yeah. I mean, yeah. Means, I mean, think about it. We're only stick. talking about a little over a hundred years. Yeah, yeah. So I think, right? uh, I think another hundred years later. Maybe. I, I mean, I can personally uh, tell you from what I'm seeing happening to the young generation here in America. I mean, they're already being, uh, you know, assimilated. I mean, half sure. of them don't even speak Armenian. Yeah. They might understand it. They don't speak it. Yeah, but that doesn't um, that doesn't necessarily change the genetics. The genetics, but, but the genetics. genetics I know, but code, but here's the right? thing: but, when when they're not, they're attracted to more. 
you know, they're they obviously go to public schools and, you know, they're the, the influence, the of, influence. Yes. Uh, yes. And, and there, we're seeing a lot more mixed marriages now. And, and, you know, love is love. I get it. But I think that's eventually going to happen uh, I think in I the think next hundred years. It, I think it's inevitable uh, uh, when you have a Dutch large diaspora and if we don't, um, yeah. It's a like existential question, but if we rather go back to our uh, ancestral home, homeland, mm -hmm. uh, it's inevitable. We'll uh, diversify or dilute our media genetics. I mean, one example would be the Jewish people, of course. Um, they have been wandering and they had a huge diaspora. Well, you know, the Jews today. Hey, if you're not talking about Middle Eastern Jews, like uh, those that stayed in the original genetics, they have like European genetics, they're genetically more distant to them than Palestinians, actually. So that's, but that's another subject. I would yeah. say that similar thing will happen to Armenians inevitably if they stay long enough in what happens. Yeah. Well, not just Armenians. I mean, the whole world is 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 a melting pot. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's, it's what it's it's what it's becoming. Yeah, I it's mean, really, what I think it's there was some article they were talking about in about five hundred years. There's going to be pretty much like one race because people are going to be mixing so much. So, well, um, but that's a that's a different, different topic. Yeah. Different yeah. topic for another yeah. day, maybe another podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could uh, go on and on yep. about that. The race always comes up. <laughs> yes sir yes sir it does so um this we we i think we showed this one last episode but can you uh, shed some light about this uh this is the genetics code that you can go out there and do yourself i know it's a little bit complicated but some people we did provide the information last time mm -hmm. and some people tried to to do the math i guess yeah genetic calculators um uh, online and uh what you can do uh, the samples that have been released uh, by certain studies, like the one of uh, the one we talked about, about Lazaridis and Reich study, and, and you mm -hmm. can uh, calculate the dose. Uh, and this is not just the, the Y chromosome, this is autosomal DNA, 90% uh, of your DNA, or 99%. And you can say this to ancient populations. So what I did here is um, I got the clo closest population of all the populations available in this uh, calculator, clo closest to uh, uh, a group of samples uh, uh, from this uh, low lowlands, late Neolithic. That's how it's uh, called distance. You can see the clustering uh, to that sample to those samples from. Lowlands is also an interesting region. Uh, they have the uh, uh, the famous rock from that uh, era, uh, the Gobustan. They call it uh, uh, Car. And uh, um, uh, so there's probably from this culture, and the, these, these cultures very much related to Armenians from Urfa and Tab, Ararat, Greek, uh, Trabzon, you know. The, the Trabzon genetics are also very Armenian. You can see all uh, many Armenian genetic uh, Armenian cl mm. clusters. Of the cl this is well, very I mean, Armenian like. Yeah. Th this also makes sense because I think. Uh, who was it that uh, we had a guest that's. Uh, was it Vahan Setian who said there's over 200 different dialects of um, Ar Armenian? Almost. That 300 I yeah that think. if i think that it was like if if these dialects there's it's armenian but if they're so different that if two of them met and spoke to one another they wouldn't understand what they're saying till today they're saying yeah. that there's almost 300 different yeah again i could be wrong on the number but it was a big number different dialects so this kind of uh falls within that like how close they are that it could be you know speaking different language but it's still somewhat armenian which uh, this is genetics uh genetic cluster. no no just just this? linguistics just so, linguistics yeah, just linguistics. linguistics linguistics yeah yeah i bet i mean we have many dialects uh, that's true you know 
Um, and uh, this again shows how, how diverse Armenia is big. Uh, we, whenever we talk about, about Armenia, well, we just think about the Republic well, of Armenia. You know? Yeah, I mean, well, well. besides that, Yerisha, I know we've actually talked mm -hmm. about it with Vohan Setyan. Mm -hmm. that, you know, mm -hmm. think about what they, we've, we've mentioned this a few times. Mesopotamia yeah. was an overall term mm -hmm. of how many different people that lived, culturized that entire region for centuries upon centuries. Yeah. So who's to say Mesopotamia was really Mesopotamians? They weren't Mesopotamians. There was just one people. This was mm -hmm. a group of individuals, right? So think about the, let's call it the melting pot over time. Yeah. Spread out around, around that region. Mm -hmm. The Lord knows what happened. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's a general term. Mesopotamia was a general term. Yeah. Actually, it really I mean, was. Mesopotamia was given what in 19. Oh, oh. Are you, yeah, it was, it was a recent term in the 20th century. But again, it's, a very, it's yeah. a very generalized term of, an, of a massive, massive area of where civilization, as they say, sort of began. Uh, Dr. Y was it y Yonona uh, made an interesting comment. She said, uh, or I don't know if it's a she or he, sorry. <laughs> uh, I do medical genetics test in my practice i've never seen armenian army and an armenian having most more than four gene mutations out of 18. uh with jews most of the 18, 18. genes we checked are mutated i think this has to do with the, <laughs> the argument that's going on between yeah. i think somebody mm -hmm. mentioned that armenians are are uh from israel like yeah. you yeah. know or some 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 tribe from Israel from that ancient, migrated, ancient, 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 like, or Israelites, Israelites yeah. that migrated yeah. to the Armenian highlands. So, um, no, so. yeah, I would disagree with that. I would say the other, um, because, um, um, well, well, I think with the mutation, but I think what she means that, um, we see that Jews indeed have genetics over time because of their massive diaspora they've been living in europe and such a long time so the genetics been mutated mm -hmm. armenian genetics not that much yet that genetic cluster at the, at the moment but inevitably they've been there in the diaspora so, so uh, um, inevitably if you remain in the diaspora in your homeland then then genetically you're going to sh shift um, and um, so I think that's what she means, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, as for the Israel, I think I think what's interesting is that it's seen that Israel was actually founded by uh, by Hittites, so it's been in mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the original Canaanites, those people, they had different and, and um, Abraham. Uh, the, the 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 biblical father forefather he was not a Canaanite. He actually came from Urfa, so he came from the Armenian highlands. Published that a religion which they uh, which is now uh, called it Abrahamic religion, uh, um, and um, he came from, uh, he came to Israel and, and um, those regions. He went of course. Uh, but the funny part is that the Bible also tells us that, that uh, he didn't really want his Canaanites, uh, so he didn't want to mix them with the Semites, them to mix with uh, yeah. uh, with with his uh, kin from uh, from where he sent his servants to, to uh, bring wives for his sons. But it more, more seems to me if if you like want to talk about the like myths slash uh, you know the history uh mm -hmm. like to me that the people from, from uh, the armenian highlands they mm -hmm. uh, basically in the uh, in the israel uh, region and those middle and that cult was uh, was called uh, you know the, the the it was of Israel, and um, uh, over time it became um, and, um, uh, and and basically um, retained the, 
there, but it's of course another religion. So I would say that's more likely. Yeah. Well, we don't want to go go off topic. I, like I said, they, the they have, interesting they conversation. Have, yeah. It's, it's an yeah. There, it's just there's an go interesting ahead. conversation going on in the chat regarding um, Israelites and and hike being an Israelites or from Jer- or settled in Jerusalem so far. But you know, the, it seems like some of these people um, have done a lot of research. So any of you who are interested in being a guest and talk about this subject, maybe we can have a debate between you guys who have done a lot of research about this and, and go from there. So uh, reach out to us. You can email us. Let's uh, make it happen. Yeah. Uh, you can email us pod pod at medhedosnet.com. And uh, maybe we'll set something up where you guys, if you're not camera shy, you can join us and uh yeah, why not we guys? can have a discussion so that is not our topic i know you guys are talking about it which is a great conversation where we are paying attention to it uh, but let's move on to this uh distance to the urartians i think we're getting more into the urartu now um mm-hmm. and uh how close uh, the the genetics are um yeah yeah so this this another way of showing uh, the distance of uh, the populations we've seen on the map this one similarly the closeness of of the urartian samples that have been recently released to the armenian populations in like all those top populations that we see have virtually um genetics from armenians it's funny that we see georgian i say what is this well it's interesting georgian jews are genetic very much like our so than Georgians, so they they like a uh, outlier among Georgians. It would be that they're just uh, um, they've just uh, uh, Armenian uh, uh, Jewish who, religion. Who converted? Is that what you're saying? Jew, Jew yeah. converted to Jewish religion. Okay. It could be. Um, it's funny how related to the Assyrians the, because or uh, Albanians. Albanians. Are, Genetic. Yeah, Albanians. Albanian, Albanian, Albanians, ancient Albanians, yeah, not yeah. modern day Albanians, yeah. mm. Albanians and Iberians, right? Mm. Look it's, at that. It's the, a big possibility, no? Top five. But weren't they? Weren't I'm they? Telling you, man. <laughs> weren't they? I think the Albanians were also Christians, though. The Caucasian Albanians. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, they were. That is yeah. correct. That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. But, but they were actually I mean, part to go of the f- from the t- church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were. Um, if you go up, uh, uh, you know, you start from uh, Urfa, then Ezrum. Uh, what's the second one? Uh, Gesseria, uh, then the Georgian, Gesseria, Georgian yeah. yeah, and Gesseria. then Antap, Assyrian. So it, it just flows. You know, um, it's amazing how how uh, close we are. You know, um, you know. Another theory would be that um, basically all these communities <clears throat> that we've seen the entire tight knit. It's genetic clusters that have retained uh, ancient gen- uh, Near East prior to the changes that we seen during Arabization, Turkification, the Turkish invasion, and the uh, into the region making everyone Muslims. Uh, when those, those events happen, when we see Asiatic uh, people from Turkey and Mongolia. They've invaded the change the genetic profile there, but uh, the people um, uh, and, and everyone became Muslim, uh, or a huge chunk of the Middle East and the New East became uh, okay to mix and match because that was the most, most important thing. Um, and, uh, lost their alphabet, they used using the Arabic script, so there've been a lot of mix. The important thing was to mix with some of the same religion doesn't matter what ethnicity but, but a few groups of uh, pockets of uh, say, say ethnic uh, people have been uh, left, left outside these invasions of the Turkic invasion of the Arabic invasion and that we see here close to close to Ratu, which is an ancient king them are actually those who have retained the ancient genetics which have been in a close-knit community which, which is Syrians, Georgian Jews, Mountain Jews, Iranian Jews, Kurdish Jews yeah, uh, have um, 
resisted, uh, uh, let's say, within the Muslim communities that has happened, that shifted them away from the ancient population. One of the reasons why these uh, populations cluster so close to Armenians, that region that uh, has been um, uh, islands, it has has been a very interesting uh, region in the in the past that that uh, uh, some some uh, that retains a few like of these groups that retain genetics. But okay. yeah, the, all, right, the, all, all of mm-hmm. those the Armenians. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, this is an interesting. Uh... Yeah, this is an interesting one too. That's. Um, very fascinating. Oops, sorry, let me actually know. Mm-hmm. Let, let me, bring me it check. Back up. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, what studies from? Uh, it's a study, very recently. It's a very interesting study. The, the 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 article is called "A Global Analysis of Matches and Mismatches in Linguistic History." So uh, this is a very recent November twenty. 20- 22 um, by a group of people who uh, basically created database of uh, all kinds of languages, language family, and compare them to uh, genetic analysis to see uh, uh, if languages evolve differently than genetic. Like I said, there's actually I would identify three parts you have ethnicity thing language is a different thing and genetics is a different thing and usually like if you call armenian you speak armenian and your genetics are armenian an armenian with uh different genetics because your grandmother mother is russian or, or, or a different um, ethnicity uh, Armenian, you call yourself Armenian, you might be classified, but it can also be reversed. You can have, have mis- uh, 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 you can have Armenian genetics live in uh, uh, Turkey and call yourself Turk because you know you have been assimilated or, or during you might have changed your identity to Kurdish or Turkish. Um, yeah. So there can be genetic. Ethnic and linguistic he has analyzed uh, these uh, matches and mismatches, and they actually conclude. Uh, usually, it has been. This is another subject of controversy, of course, because if they, that the Armenian language is not Urartian, then you, but it is Urartian, as we can see. See, this is undeniable. No one can, can say Armenian genetics. It'll say right now. So, but if you believe like Armenian genetics is Urartian, but then naturally Armenians would have experienced the language shift. Yeah. Uh, uh, that they, they, someone would, must have brought the Armenian language to the Urartians, which we've seen from genetic data that it looks like it's not the case. But it pro- mm-hmm. Previously, in the beginning of the show. But this uh, study of analysis and uh, linguistic, and they also say, well, it doesn't, doesn't seem like the Armenians have uh, uh, have shifted their language. It seems that, that Armenian language is in line in the European speakers of Anatolia. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the Azerbaijanis are different from Turkic people, but they speak Turkic. So they did mm-hmm. experience the language. What the, the study they also identified. They say uh, the Azerbaijan is, is indeed misaligned with other Turkic speakers, with the original Turkic speakers of Asia. They're yeah. genetically different uh, uh, to the Turkic speakers, but the Armenian language misaligns. So if Armenian language is native, if the Armenians are genetically native, you know, then, then we can start piece together a different uh, um, in uh, uh, together with the Urartian history and I, as I said I believe the language 
but that's an interesting su subject. Maybe in the future, there'll yeah, be more yeah, absolutely about that. Yeah, yeah. All right, so now we're getting into the uh, Indo European elements uh, in Hurrian. Um, yeah. So let's talk about I, this a little uh, yeah, bit. Yeah, I've mentioned uh, I've mentioned this one, right? Uh, uh, this book. Uh, you asked me this, uh, the question, and this is the book uh, published by these guys in 2008. Very extensive analysis into the. These are linguists, and they did the uh, Hurrian and Indo European um, um, language found uh, a very close. Close, very close um, similarities. Not just uh, um, you know word similarities, but literally grammar, grammar and um, and all those kind of things. I've actually there's an interesting thing I recently I asked AI to analyze the Hurrian Armenian similar language similarities in an Armenian language similarities. There's an AI that has been uh, talked about recently. Recently, I think uh, Elon Musk is a co-inventor uh, of that uh, project. It's called OpenAI, and the chatbot is yeah, called yeah, the, yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny you mentioned yeah, that, that uh, chat, chat GDP or yeah, GDT um, or yeah. Whatever. The article you posted when you were questioning about the Urartians, uh, it, it's such an interesting article. Those of you who um, go to uh, peopleofar.com and read that article, it's very interesting. And I actually went on there and I just asked the random questions about Armenian history. And I got to say, man, what, chat, chat G, yeah, GDT yeah, or whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah. I mean, surprisingly, it really had, I want to say, ninety-five percent accurate information. Um, oh man! Very, very. I was it, really. I mean, just crazy. random questions. Yeah, I, I was just. I was trying to think of okay, what can I throw at them to see if they would everything. I, I even. It's not a they. It's not it's, a they. It's, it's it. It's an it, well, it. they, the people behind it, it, it right? It, yeah, but it's an entity. Yeah. So even even I asked about Vartan. I mean, it everything it wrote. Is what we've talked about, all the research that we've been provided. It's so, unbelievable. So are, so are you saying we're out of jobs? Uh, pretty much. <laughs> it's, I don't know. Maybe Gevork's <laughs> helping them out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's really interesting. It's in, in that, that article you wrote, I read it. I was like, wow, that is crazy how surprisingly it is talking about the Urartians yeah. and, and the connection to the Armenians. So do you want to talk about that yeah, a little bit? Yeah, the funny part is that it sometimes gives completely different answers but uh, it's, I find it so fascinating it, it literally like, like writes sentences and um, you can actually ask a question you can trick it and, and it can trick you how it works uh, it's yeah. a la large language model AI so like um, how many billions of of, of data points and it has yeah. internet uh, I guess or even fed with books and all kinds of information and based from different papers so like I'm saying to you like I believe that the Hurrian language, European language there's not much research to it that AI can do analysis and illusion and um, I, I know, know this is not like a very scientific because the AI will get to there, well, it mm -hmm. can make scientific conclusions. And a, a paper on itself, uh, and it has been published in the scientific news. Uh, but one of the funny things is, like, I ask the AI this difficult question. I ask it, like, how would they are descend from the Urartian? Because it told me the Armenian language is descended from the Urartian. So I thought to myself, let me ask this difficult question. How would the Armenian language descent from the European, right? So it mm -hmm. says the, this is what it, it gave me. It's considered to be an Indo European language. This does not necessarily mean that it did not the language family, which includes Urartian. The Indo European language family is a line of languages that includes many different languages spoken throughout Europe, Asia, and the Americas. It is which to be a member of multiple language families 
and it is believed that Armenian language, European hero writing roots, the exact relationship between the two language families is not it is generally believed that the Armenian language descends from a language that was a member of the Uro and that is later become influenced by other in the European languages. So this is an interesting and then okay that's interesting but could the Uro writing language itself be related to so this is what it answered me. It is possible that Jeez. the Uro writing language mm -hmm. family protein in the European language, which is the hypothetical common ancestor of the Indo Europe. However, the exact relationship between the two language families is not well understood and is searched and debate among linguists. Some theories suggest that the Uro writing language family is European language family, while others suggest that the two language families developed independently. I think that the Uro writing language family is not as well studied as the indo europe so there is still much that is not known about the origins the relationship of other language family i can go yeah. further yeah I, mean, I actually uh, i actually just posted uh, i pinned the article so those of yeah. you in the uh, in the chat can uh, go and read that article it's very very interesting um yeah so all right moving back to uh okay what are we looking at here yeah so what we see here is, is the bronze um, etching, or um, you know, of of uh, and, and um, uh, what we see here, we, we see a certain mark uh, um, between the last two people in writing time, and um, um, these writing language is actually that the the, the the Urartian language that we uh, that we're talking about come to us uh, from the deciphered um, um, cuneiform uh, tablet, uh, but uh, this one they, they might have been different languages in uh, you um, uh, during the Urartian kingdom, or at least different scripts. Well, this is one of the scripts that, but, but I do believe this is an Indo-European language because they're using uh, the very similar to Luvian and other Anatolian hieroglyphs, and those have been uh, used for in the European languages. So, so this might be uh, actually, uh, the shift that we see. This might be the Armenian actually language. A few theories: it's either Hurrian or writing itself is an Armenian language or Proto-Armenian. They used uh, Urartian. Uh, Hurrian uh, uh, in court, national mm -hmm. their empirical ambitions, uh, and this might be the, the Armenian. Sadly, this one has not, not been decided yet. So, okay, uh, but but it mm. is very important to, to understand that the Armenians have been using uh, during the Urartian time. So there have been uh, lots of scripts, um, yeah, you know, next to each other. There's, there's still so much to be deciphered. Uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, this, this stone. Let's talk about this stone. Yeah. yeah. It's a very interesting picture. This one, a friend of mine um, uh, actually uh, like, hey, uh, did you know in Turkey, um, at the Van region, but it is still in province of Van, but a different region, they found another uh, temple. Uh, um, of the the, the writing king, uh, they found it's very interesting. Uh, the archaeological excavation is still ongoing. Uh, so I, I took a look at the temple, and what I, I see, I see a cross, a stone. Block. So I was like, like, oh, this is interesting. Again, this proves that Armenians have been living there. Um, natural, of course, this is not the, the, from the writing era. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah of course. It, it should, but the fact part that fortress and and um the temple that they're talking about is completely destroyed so it's not been known in modern history but probably was still by by armenians during the middle ages and this is actually one interesting of the proofs uh, things i actually also found this but i always love to uh, look at turkish archaeological 
blogs and, and, and news sites because mm. uh, you can find a lot of things. I actually one time I found um, that they had an archaeological discovery of a free they were they were uh, holding all these artifacts and on one artifact was in there. So I was like, hey, this more evidence since Armenia is literally occupied by that, that just dug up uh, from ancient times until at least Middle Ages. But yeah, this, a lot mm -hmm. of been destroyed, of course, and buried. But this this stuff yeah. again proves that Armenia is... All right. Yeah, and and this is what we're talking about that they found. Where Where is this exactly? This is at um, it's near Van, near Lake Van. Uh, I had a feeling it was going to be close to Van. Yeah, it is. It is. It is um, let me check for the code. Uh, today, today, of course, Turkey. Van. It's it's in the village nearby. Village uh, named Korso. The ancient Armenian name was Gashot of that village. And uh, the third castle. So the village is called Korsot. It's it's uh, Van, um, Lake Van. It's, it's, it's not in the city of Van, but. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Guzida said Tuz Tuzpa. Tushpavan or Tushpavan. Oh, it's not Tushpa, no. Right. So Tushpa was well, that's, that's what, uh, that's what the capital's name was. Yeah. Ah, Tushpa or Tushpavan. Yeah. Yeah. And and that, that that's uh, the, the city of Van. There is also yeah. a province of Van. And and, mm -hmm. and this one was not found in the city of Van place, but around Lake Van. Now, and, was this uh, a the, recent discovery? Uh, or recent, like... Uh, I think like a few weeks ago, they. Uh, I think this one they found, but they haven't been excavating. But recently they have excavated it. Uh, they stopped not. They, they will continue later. Uh, but they found um, uh, the uh, um, uh, with a temple, and they also found a tomb. tomb. Uh, they found some medieval. Uh, 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 elements was the uh, stone with the I mean you cross on it uh, uh, they found some medieval was occupied still active uh, during the middle ages all the way back and they found a royal tomb that that would be very interesting to see if they can get the or will be published to see identified genetically but sure if if there's nothing done oddly yeah. to the bones. It will be, a, um, yeah. but yeah, this is. Is this uh, the same site right here? Also, yeah, it's the same site. I think if yeah. you go to the next slide, you will see uh, the the entrance of the tomb. It's the entrance of the, yeah. the tomb. So it might be the tomb of Menua himself or one of the. So they don't know writing. yet. They haven't. They haven't done anything. They just kind of. This is the outskirts. Yeah, of it. They, they've. They, they've just. Started started to excavate but um, uh, they will continue uh, later on yeah now, yeah with so this, interesting. Uh, an armenian cross and it's uh... um well let me yeah. uh I, I we're shifting again we kind of shifted into urartu and uh i want to share yeah. this picture this is recently you with david reich right um yeah. seems like you guys are having an interesting conversation and uh, did, was this yeah. at the museum or was there a lecture that you went to? Lecture that I went to that I briefly talked about the last time. Yeah. But this was uh, at the university in, in Holland. He came to okay. talk about, about his recent findings. So, so we walked and talked after the lecture a long time. And uh, we had an interesting conference. that Armenia is a genetically Urartian. So... Mm -hmm. That was uh, interesting for me, but uh, uh, yeah, we had an interesting conversation uh, with the guy. And was he uh, was he for it or was he 
against it as far as uh, the genetics of Urartians being Armenians? No, he's he's completely in line, like uh, um, self, like yes, genetically Armenians are uh, very much Urartians, um, uh, but but he says like he says I'm not a linguist, so when it comes to linguistics, it, it's um, uh, differently from the Urartian language family. So I can yeah. he really didn't he couldn't. He says when you look at genetics, I, I can I'm very sure that the Armenians have. Urartians. The interesting thing he said, I also uh, turned it into a video because I was, he said that Armenians are today the, the only people, living people, the Y, y chromosome, basically the male lineage of the Yamnaya people. Uh, um, so there's literally uh, um, at least a significant amount, some pockets of people who have also uh, some of it, but the Armenians today are one B Y chromosome that we have that's very much linked to the Yamnaya uh, people, and the Yamnaya people are considered to be the spreaders of the European language, or the origin on the Armenian highlands. So what it seems, yeah. seems to me is that the Armenians went up with the uh, steppe people there, created the Yamnaya culture, uh, mm. or riding and chariots and then they, they spread it around but today the Armenians are actually significant amounts of uh, Y chromosome related to the Yamnaya people which is another piece of the puzzle yeah um, I want to thank everybody who's joining us live on YouTube and Facebook uh, yeah, Twitter been, and, it's and been a lively Telegram. chat yeah thank you everybody in the chat that they're having a great conversation um, I want to uh, mentioned those of you who might be joining us now, we are talking to Yerisha Azarian, who is the uh, creator of the ever so popular blog People of R. Mm -hmm. uh, go make sure you you go and read all the articles, everything that is posted about just Armenian history in general. And then that's yeah. People of R. It's a wealth. It's a wealth of information. Yeah. And we are today's topic again. We're covering the uh, new genetic study that shows that Indo-European homeland was. Is, began basically in the Armenian mm -hmm. highlands uh, and we're kind of shifting into the Urartian genetics um, showing that, you know, because there's this constant argument that Urartians weren't Armenians, but obviously that's falsification in my opinion. Um, but you recently, um, there was a, uh, there was a, uh, was it a pop-up museum or w what was happening that there was a lot of artifacts and we have a video we're going to show right now. Yeah, that's, that's very cool. Um, yeah, uh, um, it, it was a uh, ex Holland. Um, uh, it was called um, under the spell of our. It had a lot, a lot of uh, items from the Armenian Museum brought to the to play here. So I was like, hey, I live in Holland. I have to go there, and I filmed them because I I kind of uh, I I remember back in the days I was like asking guys on the Armenian History Museum why is it, why is it so little online about like images and and they told me actually that it was forbidden to film in the Armenian History Museum the same thing. but it kind of pity because I think they should actually like let people it will only attract more visitors to see the items live but anyways that they they did them from the Armenian History yeah. Museum to Holland, so I went there and filmed, and I've seen this uh, from uh, from close up, and you can't imagine how awesome those are if you see them uh, up close, like like the the the, the Urartian helmet of uh, of one of the Urartian kings, uh, from King Argishti. Um, and uh, it's it's a huge. Me, the guy had had a huge head. Or <laughs> the helmet is like this huge helmet. But I also read that it might have been a, a, um, a his helmet that he did. And we know Haldi was a, a champion like hike. He was considered mm -hmm. a giant. They explained a huge helmet, and, and he has a shield like it was a massive shield. So that. Display there, 
was very well we already have somebody in the chat that's disagreeing saying that yeah. Urartians had nothing to do with Armenians and yep. only oh, yeah, Armenians I, think uh, this go to independent well, well, sources well, this, yeah. is such an, this is such a nonsensical thing I hear it all the time like look at the genetics and our ancestors nothing to do with those people in Van from Urartu the genetics has been identified I mean, literally the, you're literally you're how, literally providing proof <laughs> Yeah. Uh, to, I can so much. To, I, I can. I still can't understand this. Because, yeah. Because it's all based on one sea language is different than the Urartu, and therefore they're not the same. It's like saying the Gorange because the language is different. You know, you know, yeah. Everyone identifies with some, uh, but it kind of bothers me that that people like this is definite much proof that literally. The, at the, the one of the best proof that I had is like the sources is say, this is yeah is what we're discussing right now and tonight yeah. yeah well maybe he joined us late so uh Patriot Four is asking why is our history so lost and hidden well that's I mean that's a there's so many there's uh, there's so many arguments to that yeah why yeah, uh, a lot of really... things have happened a lot of our history is still uh, uh yeah. Uh, hidden and needs to be dug up you know in in armenian highlands uh, a lot of stuff is hidden in uh, other countries museums besides, that they don't release that, besides that anybody who deep dive in, deep dives into yeah. ancient history ancient history um can start connecting their own dots it almost feels like it's open for interpretation it's not mm -hmm. necessarily that yeah but you start forming a lot of opinions they may not be accepted opinions, let's say by, by scholars or academia, but a lot of them start pointing to more or less the same type of things. I'm not yeah. going to, I'm not at the liberty to discuss what, yeah. but. Yeah, yeah. Well, why don't we uh, show that video uh, and maybe you can kind of narrate it and uh, tell us what, uh, what, what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah. Is it, uh, so hold on. Let me pause this and playing will start it. Out. Give me one second. I don't know why it's doing this. Let's try this one more time. This is a very buffering? cool one. Uh, I can talk. It's doing it again. Yeah. Can you guys see this, uh, or is it still no, buffering? It's, it's buffering on our end. Why not? Yeah. It's somebody in the chat it's... say. Um. All right. Let's let's try this. Try it again. Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. So, yeah, we've seen we seen this from the beginning. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yep. Yeah. So we see this here from from the uh, Urartu came from the kingdom of Urartu. Uh, these are the territory of modern day Republic of Armenia. And we see very cool stuff in details. Uh, we see. Seen uh, uh, from the Urartian religion, deity uh, hanging above, and uh, mythological creatures on the sides, and uh, bowls where uh, uh, where wine. Or we can see his stamps uh, from royal places, and we see a very fine pin uh, uh, there. Oh, here we have jump. So this one is uh, from the Artashes period. We see Tigran the Great artifacts. This one is a, a um, uh, age or an Iron Age uh, sculpture, uh, uh, which is also found in the Republic of Armenia. And let me see. These are again and some Urartian. Uh, inscriptions that have been found. Uh, some interesting stuff about about the lost slave or a slave girl trying to get it back. Uh, it's very interesting. It's wow, that's the, on from, a tablet. Yeah, yeah, from King Erimena, which is are these are are these toys for name, kids that were made? No, these little art. Uh, no, no, these ones were actually attached on periods. Uh, uh, and they serve like pendants 
don't know what the purpose was, but they were attached on the, on a uh, um, on the chariots where, where basically uh, people had like these horses and chariots, and they uh, attached mm-hmm. these. Uh, like like bronze figurines. This is also very interesting goblin uh, region. It uh, displays a uh, uh, actually a religious ceremony. There's like a story to it if you look at it. This from um, uh, where the drinking shoe, I would say, from Urartian mm-hmm. period. Part mm-hmm. here is that you can see see a little bit of a design of an Urartian shoe. Of course, they top it for for drinking, but you can see it at the bottom. It's very interesting. Uh, and this, these, these are also... Uh, yeah, this is the shield from the, the Urartian king. Um, it's the shield sure of the Urartian king. Yeah. That's... Let me pause this real quick. So this is the super cool yeah. shield. Yeah, that's it's small. Like, yeah, oh, it got pretty some, cool. Got some dings on it. Yeah, it looks like a, yeah. Stop, like a, stop, yeah, stopped a few, stopped a few things. Yeah, yeah, it went into battle. <laughs> I had to pause it. That's really yeah. interesting. Um, it's in battle. Yeah. Um, is it buffering again? My God! All right, let's try this. Buffering, but are we uh, having yeah, internet yeah. issues everywhere? Uh, yeah. yeah, seems like it. Okay. Um, it is so cool that they it, you said they allowed you to film it, right? They or were you just kind of secretly? Yeah, there? because they allowed to film, you know, it's it's, uh, it's like uh, they always allowed to film. They have no problems with. It. Why wouldn't they? By the way, I mean, like um, this is history is part of uh, the is part of our help. people pay tickets and uh, the Dutch are actually. Very smart with his this is what I want to talk about. This tablet mm. right here. Yeah, look at those. Mm. Look, at those le- look at the lettering. Yeah, this is Aramaic actually, um, but it was used uh, as period as a border stone to mar- mark territories. Uh, uh, so this in script. Many people say it looks very Armenian, uh, um, mm. like the. Uh, yeah, it does. Marshall did uh, got inspired uh, by that script. Uh, there is also some theories that the script was actually also came from. I'm not sure, but I, I know much about, about that, that part deeply enough, enough into it, but it and Again, it shows now that it's afraid of using different scripts uh, for the uh, yeah. government. Now, uh, there's another I video um, that was a 3D, um, I guess, yeah, 3D, re- yeah, reconstruction 3D, of an old village I want to show. Uh, can you talk about this a little bit? Yeah, that's a very, very cool uh, uh, of a bronze, what, what is now see it in uh, uh, and it would have been in the of Armenians uh, like I mean mm-hmm. um, it is is like I'm sure they could have lived uh, based on the uh, uh, the ground that they found the, the image of a, a bronze in Armenia so interesting well made yeah yeah they did a good job yeah. now who like made this villages. researchers uh, um, uh, um, I, I do sources uh, when I, uh, I I can't uh, remember it. but they've okay. uh, super interesting uh, with the Turkish university so it came from there so I- we um we have a question from uh guzida who asked earlier um she joined later uh she mm-hmm. wanted to mm-hmm. find out um she said um what is the relevance oh, yeah you want to go ahead and read it i can't uh, give let's see uh right here. 
She asked, uh, okay. Uh, I already said it, but why does he consider this topic important? What is the relevance for him personally and for Armenia? What does he aim with his work? Merci. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting... Um, I think uh, um, we're all, you know, especially us in diaspora, deal with a... Um, identity crisis with uh, seeking and been fascinated by the history but as soon as I actually started to invest out that nothing is known it's all hidden just hidden uh, well at the same time ancient people ancient people um, in ancient books in the bible uh, you know, people, yet nothing is known. So when I uh, some things and stuff, I was fascinated immediately. Uh, well, you know, uh, it's uh, it's it's more it's more like once you start going down one path, right? Mm -hmm. It opens doors for other paths, and you keep going further back and further back and further back and further back. Yeah. This is just the way it is with a lot of things. If you're, especially if you're into re uh, researching anything historical. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's know. very true. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those of you in the live chat, if you guys have any questions for Yerisha, please feel free to ask. Um, uh, now, what 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 are you working on next? Is there anything specific, uh, article, or some other research you're doing that you might want to share with yeah. us? Yeah, I'm always doing ten, twenty researches and. Um, I'm uh, being finished. I finished uh, back with one subject. So I go to the other. Uh, right now, in the works, are, I'm writing an article called Problem with Ed Uni. And I will actually reference that I actually uh, this uh, recently or on this part uh, about the difference of, of the uh, in the Public of Armenia, and, and because what the moment from coming up, also from there spreading to the west, western, and not to Parthians instead of Armenians. And the funny part is that they don't know what language that Uni spoke, only from Urartian record, the Unis, and the Unis we have been subdued and, and placed by the Urartians. But so I'm going to go and actually show that nope, it's okay. not, not it, Goonies. Right. Another one I'm really uh, on is, is uh, I've actually found some interest about the uh, patriarch Abraham there Cutting off. to the, yeah. the Armenian people. Another one um, about a spice in India called Hal, Hal which is uh, psychedelic, and like, uh, the one from um, uh, pre and actually giving. So, so it might have been something that I find it very interesting. Yeah. And I have some evidence for that. That there are many things going on, but uh, uh, we'll see which okay. one will be first. Um, I think Holland's uh, uh, putting a <laughs> limit on your internet. It's cutting off really bad, uh, but uh, we, oh, wow. we we can somewhat. Yeah, I think there's uh, definitely some internet dropping, but they it's okay. They don't want us uh, yeah. to know. But um, anything Did else you want to mention yeah. uh, as, as far as? Uh, before we call it and call it a morning call for you, you got to go get some you. sleep. Yeah, I know you've been up uh, yeah. all night with don't us. Drink, don't drink any more uh, coffee. No, no, no more coffee for me. Actually, <laughs> fall asleep right on the. On the all right. 
Well, Eric uh, John, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate yeah, it. Man. Thank you for thanks all the for, work. Thanks for waking up in the morning. Yeah, and thank you this. for all the work you're doing and sharing all this information on, on, on your blog and with us. We'll have you back on and maybe talk about those spices that you're and, uh, doing research and, on. And maybe maybe a little bit more of a convenient time for you, man. We're okay talking here at night. Yeah. Um, and yeah, to okay. those of you who, uh, who are... Go ahead, sit. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, more convenient time for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, maybe we'll pre-record it. Um, yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah. Um, all right, well, we, we wish you a happy new year. Uh, I know you have a lot of new exciting stuff in your life, so hopefully 2023 yeah, will get you to those goals closer and uh, be healthy, be well. We will chat with you soon and have you back on and talk about more more uh, exciting stuff. Yeah, yeah, brother. Thank you thank very you much for everything you do. Again, always nice to see you guys. Fascinating. Uh, it's great. And I hope it goes. Uh, yeah. We really need something like, like this. I don't think there's much. You guys are doing an awesome yeah. job. Thank Thanks, you. man. Thank, Thank you, buddy. You're, Thank you. You're, we're trying. You're 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 the, one of the reasons why we're doing an awesome job. Yeah, yeah we couldn't do it without. Yeah, people we can't like do you. it without people like you. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, best wishes. Go get some rest. We'll talk to you cool. offline. All right. Yeah. Take care. Take Later, care, brother. All right, everybody. That was Yerisha Gazarian from People of R. Uh, to uh, I think so, uh, um, Susan, or scroll down really quick. Susan was asking uh, if we have any questions for Yerisha. Please reach out to People of R. A R. People of A R. dot com. Yeah. You can also find his uh, Facebook. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube mm -hmm. channel. He is responsive. Yeah. So yeah. please reach out to him if you have any questions as far as that's concerned. Um, posts great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You can you can reach out. He 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 like you said he does respond. Yeah. If you want to help him, if you have some information, you might want to uh, assist him with the blog. You're more than welcome to. Uh, I'm sure he'll be happy to take any information that is factual or been researched. Um, I want to thank everybody who has joined us through the past two hours. We apologize for the audio situation. Um, again, we don't know if it's the internet or if it's from uh, the device, but um, this is what it is when you're having video from abroad, I guess. Uh, but it's okay. I think it was, uh, we'll clean it up when we post it on the podcast uh, platform. So I guess I got a long night of editing. <laughs> Um, uh, are you guys going to do an episode on Jerusalem? Um, yeah, guys, just to let you know, if you see our laundry list of episodes that we're going to be doing, um, it's a lot. I know a lot of people reach out to us and ask us to do this, to do that. Um, our goal right now is what we're doing is we're going on a chronological order as far as the reads that Mike and I do. And historically we speaking. Yeah, historically um, speaking. In terms of in terms of our guests, we tend to find the most knowledgeable individuals, whether yeah. they whether whether it's their profession or whether it's been a hobby or whatever whatever you think, yeah. whatever you want to call it, um, because we've spoken to some individuals yeah. who have different careers, mm -hmm. but have been doing this stuff for 30, 40 years, yeah. like Just Hamlet, love, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, so. And then uh, we have reached out to some amazing intellectuals, historians, journalists. Uh, some have responded. Some we're still waiting. We're hoping to get some big names um, yeah, on the show coming year. So um, we'll announce those. Again, we do lives when we have guests. Uh, and uh, I know we'll have uh, next month, uh, Elena will be joining us yeah, with the first she episode. She'll be covering Queen Tamar uh, yeah. or Milke. <laughs> Milke. 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 Yeah. Milke. Um, so that's that's coming up next month. Um, I think we'll probably do an episode first week. Just one of the yeah. we're gonna cover. When, uh, when are we planning uh, that? Show, January right? uh, January twelfth? No, fourth. Fourth? Fourth. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um those of you are asking, okay, I'm going to play Juicy. the we won't we won't have a we won't have a New Year's hangover. Yeah. So here is the Nejde sculpture. This is in the 3D environment, guys. Yeah. This isn't the, obviously the, the um, marble version yet. But 
Uh, pre-orders are uh, available, available now. For pre-order, and yeah. they should be. We're expecting them to be ready to ship out. They are in production right now. Uh, yeah. By end of January, I think. Yes. Um, each each piece does take a long time to make. You guys just want to let you guys know. Um, it's not. You know, doesn't yeah. come out of a printing press. So if you want to have one of these, uh, they, we get them in 25 batches. We've actually gone through those already. So yeah. we're waiting for uh, as far as pre-order. So but keep if you want them, you can pre-order them. Um, they will be coming, like we said, as soon as possible. Uh, those of you, like I said, go to medhousenet.com uh, and you can pre-order yeah. this. The other sculptures are available. So if you want to order those, we'll ship Aaron, those out right away. Aaron's asking, when is the episode for okay, Nejdeh? For Nejde. I know, <laughs> Aaron, so many people have reaching out to us. So yeah, the, yeah. the episode of Nejde, it's, it, it, uh, I have a vision of how I want it to be done. It's going to be shot in a different way. Yes. Um, I think you guys are going to be surprised. Um, the script is almost ready. Um, we're working on it. We're working on we're it. Work That's something we're hoping either next month or February to do. I'm thinking more closer towards April. I'm hoping because it'll be close with Armenian genocide might do something like that. But again, I want this episode to be shot in a way where it, it it's meaningful. Yeah. And the way we're going to, hey, man, all of them are meaningful. No, no, no. And the way we're going to yeah, read but... it and we're going to talk about it is going to be different from our typical yeah. way of doing our yeah. podcast. So, um, but yeah, that's as far as, we're 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 chipping away we're chipping away yeah uh what else um well it's our last show of the year of the year yeah um we want to wish everybody a happy all of safe you guys. New year to all of you who have joined and uh, who's been supporting us yeah uh on on our youtube platform on uh, facebook on our podcast platform to those listeners that keep downloading and listening thank you thank so you. much yeah. we For every single one of you guys we see the numbers we see where you guys are listening to us. I want to shout out to the Artsakhsis who are listening to us. Yeah. Thank There's, you so much. Um, we've gotten emails from them. We're with you guys yes, we uh, with spirit. Um, you know, we we are. Um, we're hopeful 2023 will be a better year for uh, well, Armenia, Armenia, our brothers, our sisters. Yeah. Um, I, I, I wish there's more unity. Uh, I think there's too much division right now. And in this country, too. There's way too much division. I think we need to... Yeah, but that's all over the world, yeah. man. And I'm not saying that's normal. Yeah. I'm not saying that's normal. It's not something that anyone should uh, accept. Yeah. At all. Doesn't matter what creed, race, nationality, don't matter. Mm -hmm. It don't matter. There are certain factions in this world that are trying to divide us. Fight yeah. against it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Fight against it. Because yes. we the people rule, not them. Yes, but. yes. So... um Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Facebook. Um, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, subscribe. Uh, Patreon. Support us yeah. on Patreon. Go become a Patreon. It starts at five bucks a month. It helps with production costs. Um, so uh, anything you want to do. And if you do sign up, you do get a free T-shirt or a hat. Um, we do have the floating hat. What was his name? The, I, I don't know. Did we ever name the floating hat? <laughs> Who's he there? That's the mannequin. Yeah. That's the mannequin. Um, Not me. That's fine. Anything you want to mention before we end it? Oh, Any man. wishes? Happy New Year's to everybody, you guys. Have a happy, healthy New Year's uh, going into 2023, uh, getting out of a weird 2022. Yeah, very bizarre. Very weird 2022. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, honestly, keep it in your minds. Don't let these forces divide any single one of you. Yeah, I'm yeah. honestly, I'm a big, I'm a big advocate of this yeah. uh, with my geopolitical beliefs and views. Yeah, and uh, we hope 2023 is a better year for everyone. Whatever goals you have set, uh, go for it. Don't give up. Um, we know it's tough, but you know, um, it, hope is one of the strongest things human yeah. beings can have because without hope, you can't achieve anything. So, as, as far as that, that goal can seem uh keep that hope alive and just keep hustling till you get to that goal and then after that create a new goal and then go after that one that's the point of life um yeah. and um yeah that's it. just keep going don't give up yeah that's it so um we aaron that's a good suggestion join hosank yeah 
Um, all right, guys. Well, all right. again, oh. thank you, everybody, for joining you us all. tonight. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. And as we always say, respect one another. Love one another. Until next year. <laughs> <laughs> Until next week, next Until year. Next year, next week. Next week, next year. Yeah. Take care of yourselves. Good night, everyone. Good night.